Greetings, my little hobgoblins, and welcome to Morbid Mansion Theater, where there's more cheese than the government surplus in Springfield, Missouri. <laughs> it exists, look it up. Where else can you waste your evening? Spend a fantastic evening than with Mr. Malto watching an awesome movie. Are you trying to give me the double talk? And as always, Mr. Malto spared no expense to bring you a top-notch movie for your entertainment. Actually, uh, I didn't spend anything on this movie. But hey, it's the thought that counts, right? Damn right. <laughs> and keeping with that tradition, I reached into the old cheese vault and pulled out this zinger. Excuse me while I whip this out. <laughs> A 1968 science fiction horror film entitled The Astro Zombies. Wow! <laughs> wow! Wow! All I can say is wow! Well, you better wait till you see the movie before you get excited. <laughs> <laughs> it stars Wendell Corey, John Carradine, and one of my favorites, Tora Satana. Yeah, baby! <laughs> I know, right? A disgruntled scientist who has been fired from the space agency decides to create superhuman monsters from the body parts of innocent murder victims. I don't see any issues with that. Back off, man. I'm a scientist. The creatures eventually escape and go on a killing spree, attracting the attention of both an international spy ring and the CIA. Farewell and adieu to you fair Spanish ladies. So with that, grab your favorite beverage, a snack, turn down the lights, and let's watch Astro Zombie.
Be very, very quiet. I'm hunting rabbits. events, I think it's necessary that we reveal to Dr. Petrovich who you really are. From what you told me, I'm convinced that he has absolutely nothing to do with this situation. Send Dr. Petrovich in, please. If his repairized Dr. DeMarco is somehow connected with the murders, then Dr. Petrovich would be most helpful. Doctor. 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 Dr. Petrovich. Doctor. 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 Good to see you, Doctor. And Doctor. Sit down, won't you, Doctor? Thank you. What we discuss here, gentlemen, must remain in the confines of this room. This is a very delicate situation. We are concerned with the mutilation murders that have occurred over the past six months. We have reason to believe that these are somehow related to the work that you and Dr. Marco were doing. Consequently, you are not above suspicion. Dr. Porter here, who's worked with you for the past two months, is in fact one of our agents. I'm sorry, Doctor, but uh, putting a man in your lab in your confidence is essential to us in confirming your loyalty. Because, uh, you see, Doctor, I'm very important. Uh, I have many leather-bound books, and my apartment smells of rich mahogany. As you can see, I took the liberty of bringing in some of the experimental work from the lab. Now, you know Dr. DeMarco in the extent of his work better than anyone. I would like you to explain to Mr. Holman here the theories that you and Dr. DeMarco had developed on vital organ implants and thought wave transmission. Well, gentlemen, I... Pardon me, Doctor. There's someone else I want to hear this. Would you have Chuck Edwards come in, please? Chuck? Yes, I've asked him to come in on this case. Hello! Oh, Chuck, you know Eric, of course. Good to ah. see you, Chuck. Ah, here we go. So this is Dr. Petrovich. Well, Doctor, it's a pleasure to meet you. I've heard a great deal about your work. Thank you. Well, uh, please continue, Doctor. First of all, I'd like to say that all of this is somewhat of a shock, but uh, naturally I'm prepared to give you all the help I'm able. Doctor, why don't you start with the explanation of the experiments you and Dr. DeMarco were working on at the time he was dismissed from the Aerospace Research Center? Well, let me go back a little first. Uh, 
As you know, we've had blood banks and eye banks for years. And more recently, liver, kidney transplants. Uh, Heart-lung machines are uh, being universally applied. Open-heart surgery is common practice. Now, Dr. DeMarco had developed a rudimentary mechanical heart. But more important, at the time of his dismissal, he was deeply involved in thought wave transmission through radio frequencies. Uh, which has obvious applications in the advance of our man in space program. Yes, imagine feeding information from computers into the brain of a man in orbital flight. Now you see, Chuck, why I want you in on this case. Foreign government might be deeply interested in obtaining this information. Chuck is in our subversives division. Oh, incidentally, Chuck, uh, how are you doing with those leads? All right. Looks like the nightclub's the meeting place. I should get some useful information. If I don't turn into a lush first. <laughs> Doctor, what exactly do you mean by this thought wave transmission? Well, here, let me demonstrate. Now, this is a rather uh, primitive device, and we must assume that by now, Dr. DeMarco has developed something more sophisticated. The two protrusions are miniaturized transistor radio receivers. As I vary the wavelength frequency of the oscillator, watch the reactions on the brain. What you're saying is, Doctor, that one man's thoughts can be transmitted to another man's brain and that man will respond to it? Exactly. In this way, knowledge from the minds of our top astrophysicists, aerospace medical scientists, neurosurgeons, could be combined and projected into the receiving device of a quasi-man in interplanetary spaceflight. Quasi-man? You mean a, a sort of a zombie? Well, it's not exactly scientific terminology, but it would be close to the truth. Well, what else would you call a man with a... Synthetic electrically driven heart, a stainless steel mesh stomach, plastic pancreas, cellulose liver, and to mention a few things for a start. You sound insane. Do you realize that? Incredible. Not for a minute. And Dr. DeMarco was working on a silicon treatment of the skin, which would make it impervious to micrometeorites. Now, now wait a minute. If this DeMarco and his experiments were so advanced, then why was he dismissed? Well, when a man doesn't know the difference between an experiment on an Air Force officer and a cadaver, well, I think it's time to drop him from the team. Damn right. It's been in these past six months that these peculiar murders have taken place. Now, we theorize it is not purely coincidental. Doctor, there is no need for me to tell you how much we need and appreciate your cooperation. Let me remind you, gentlemen, everything said here is classified. We must continue our investigations undercover. please. Where's the tape? <laughs> Foolish. The matter of money first, then the tape. Pay hey, one. One moment, please. There we are. 
there were some complications, some additional expenses. I find the original price insufficient. What? Wait a minute. Are you trying to change our deal? Does a chicken have a pecker? <laughs> well, there were some risks. Risks that require more compensation. I need more money. Who are you? I cut you, man. Another tape. I agree. permission, I will take my leave now. Good night. Satana was played by none other than Tora Satana. You may recognize her from the movie Faster Pussycat Kill Kill. Satana was born Tora Luna Yamaguchi in Hokkaido, Japan. Her father was a Japanese silent movie actor of Filipino descent, and her mother was a circus performer of Native American descent. Who oh, is that fair, <laughs> well, John? After the end of World War II and a stint in the Manzanar internment camp in Lone Pine, California, Tora and her family moved to Chicago. In school, because of frequent delinquency, she was sent to reform school, and when she was 13, her parents arranged for her marriage to 17-year-old John Satana in Hernando, Mississippi, which lasted a whopping nine months. Satana moved to Los Angeles, and by the age of 15, she used fake identification to hide the fact that she was a minor and began burlesque dancing. She was dancing in the Silver Slipper nightclub in Las Vegas when she met director Ted Michaels and starred in The Astro Zombies. In 2002, she returned to acting, reprising the role of Melvina Satana in Mark of the Astro Zombies, the sequel to this movie. And I must say, it's even cheesier than this one. <laughs> Come on, man! So with that, let's get back to the movie. Thank you. 
Rancho, prepare for a 10.2 memory extraction. Francho. Francho, I have the blood exchanger ready. We must get the patient into the thermal freeze vault before cellular deterioration takes place. ready for the extraction. We must be sure of total degaussing of the circuits. cells. His brain may call on them again. Now, Francho, you place the degauss circuit in the program. Then we set the programmer at exactly 10 and 2 tenths seconds. This time, we must not fail to remove the emotional characteristics. Our only hope of recovering our original creation 
is to be sure that this brain is a pure calculating machine. Now, 20,000 volts and 500,000 cycles, and we're ready. Now. prescription medication. Quick enough, Francho. The blood exchanger. thermal freeze vault. If we are to preserve the patient until we can complete the synthetic heart transplant, there must be absolutely no cellular decomposition whatever. We must move quickly now.
Dr. Porter. Will you get this Dr. Porter bit? Listen, it's after 5 o'clock, right? My name's Eric, remember? Would you believe a pinch on the nose? Would you believe a pinch on... <gasps> Eric! The young are never satisfied with anatomical experiments on plastic models. Oh, you're quite right, Doctor. Now, never inhibit the inquisitive mind. Or the investigative hand. Inquisitive investigation is sometimes best done undercover. Well, my dear, what do you think? That's very nice, Doctor. But I think it's time for you to go home. <sighs> yes, I am tired. Go on. I'll finish up. I'll help you, Lynn. No, that's all right. You and Casanova have a date. Ah, Chuck's buying a dinner at the uh, carriage house. You know something? I think he's hooked on the dancer. Oh, really? Come on. See you at two in the morning. Good night. <laughs> Thanks, Cotton. That's one I owe you. Good night. Good night, my dear. Don't stay late. I won't. Astroman remotely with thought wave transmissions. All synthetic mechanisms would respond as though human. Take this heart, for example. Not human, solely a product of the laboratory, yet functioning with power from solar energy. You'll notice the heartbeat is uninterrupted.
one on the left. And the girl? She sent her sister back to the Petrovich. Who's the other man? Hey, how many guesses do you want? Come on. Oh, you see, terrific. Mm, I love that chick. Oh, it's a great idea. Hmm. I'm jealous. Oh, I love you too. Why do you have to get me in trouble all the time? Well, it's your girlfriend. Uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> She's with two others, Porter and another man. You are to observe only, then leave the club before you're seen. If you don't mind, I'm most anxious. But I do mind. You are to leave now. Return here immediately. Spakasi card. Ten bucks, no, buddy, I think. No, it's not. Oh, Just yeah. hold on, pal. Hold on. You watch this now. Okay. Just keep your eye on it. Hold mm -hmm. Now what? Yeah, just hold on. Hold on. It's going to be all right. That ten dollars is mine. Yeah, Got to be careful now. Easy money. Well, at least you can buy me a drink. There you are. And her, too. Uh -huh. Hmm. Chuck. Oh, Chuck. Mm. Do you find the study of anatomy interesting? Uh, that's my uh, favorite of all studies. <laughs> well, like Dr. Petrovich said, we're undercover men.
like. It's not alone. Tell us about it, friend. You guessed right. <laughs> Who's it trying to put on? All right, hold it right there.
my little hobgoblins, it's time for another episode of Ask Mr. Molto, where I answer and solve some of life's most difficult questions sent to me by you. The first question comes from Paul Schilling, aka Uncle Polly. He asked, I noticed Grim Reapers carry large threshing sites, and with business the way it is now, do a lot of Reapers moonlight working in places like wheat fields? Well, I can't answer for the rest of my brethren due to privacy, but for the, me, the answer would be yes. I actually moonlight as a plumber. <laughs> the next question comes from Stevie Gopling. Dear Mr. Molto, I have been intensely curious about something and was hoping that you could help me finally put my mind to rest by providing an answer to this nagging question. At what precise time of the day, afternoon, or evening did time itself begin? Well Stevie, you came to the right person. Being a reaper, everything I do involves time. To the mortal mind, this question seems impossible to tackle because there are no proofs to verify the validity of any theory. But how lucky we are to have the proof of our minds, that organism that calls itself a brain. The powerful machine that calculates, eliminates, and considers possibilities with its power of logic. It may be hard to accept the idea that time is nothing, that time is nothingness. We can't see it, we can't smell it, we can't taste it or hear it. We can't even feel it. What we feel is only our biological bodies slowing, aging, and other things changing around us like trees growing, children maturing, and civilizations evolving. And that's the only thing we feel, which is change. But we don't want to know the definition of change. We want to know what time is and how we can define it. One eternity later. Everything we encounter at first is just a thought. Then we form an opinion. And then we test it to see if it's true and how it works. And we end up with a theory. If we know it works, but still don't understand why it works in such a way, it is a concept. If we understand how and why it works, it is a fact. If we trust it enough to work upon it and let it change and affect our lives, it's a belief. I hope that satisfies your curiosity and finally puts your mind to rest. The next question comes from Juke Suha. It's quite a long question, so instead of reading it, I put it in a format befitting to the occasion. Okay, first of all, have you seen the size of Timmy and Chandler's magic wand? <laughs> According to the map, we've only gone about four inches. Exactly. There is no way in hell that he'll be able to hook up with the ruler of Venus. <laughs> and as for the garden gnome, Gary, he has an extreme attitude. More than likely, the Napoleon complex. You would be wise to stay as far away from these two as you possibly can. Never come between two brothers, especially Harry and Lloyd. I mean, Gary and Tim. My advice would be, put up a shield to protect you and your ship, and get away from these two and stay clear. Well, that about does it for this episode. And remember, keep your questions coming, and you can send them to me via Facebook Messenger, or email me at mrmolto65 at gmail.com. It doesn't matter what topic or how tough they may be, Mr. Molto can answer all your questions. So see you next time on Ask Mr. Molto.
solar energy storage cell. Otherwise, any time there's no light, there's no heartbeat. Hmm. Hmm. With the storage cell, continuing the flow of current, the pump works uninterruptedly. Hmm. You see, part of the electricity generated by the solar batteries is held in the reserve until required. The cell hmm. operates on any source of light the sun or even man-made light. Hmm. hmm. These are the receivers that will relay the knowledge from the memory retention cell into the brain of the transplant. You see, these are tuned to a pre-designated frequency cycle beamed from the transmitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
question in my mind, gentlemen. Mike Weber and Thompson were onto something. We will continue with thorough search of the apartment building and the surrounding area. Not many leads, but what we've got is interesting. Uh, it's my fault. I should have been there with Mike. Now, uh, wait, Chuck. You can't be all things to all people. You can't blame yourself. Uh, look, man, that's not like kidding each other. There's no one in this line of work who doesn't know the possible consequences. Remember, this is a team effort. Each man must perform in the area assigned to him. Chuck, without your play, we wouldn't have this dossier. Oh, uh, this came with a teletype from Washington this morning. Our hit-and-run victim turns out to be a very interesting person. Sergio Dimaggio, alias Sergio Damaski, alias Count Sergei Demas. Born Budapest, 1919. Schooled Royal Academy. Served briefly with 2nd Cavalry. Joined Young Officers Revolt, 1952. Tried, convicted, sentenced two years. Served six months, escaped. Joined party, took part in Budapest riots. Recruited as an apparat and attached to Istanbul, 1957. Minor cloak and dagger work. Service Paris, 1966. Suspected assassin of Emile Bordeaux, the nuclear physicist. Disappeared, serviced Mexico eight months ago. That's the last we have on him. He sounds like a busy man. How do you think of the tie-in? Well, this is a list of the men who attended the Astro Science Conference uh, just two weeks before DeMarco was dismissed. Take a look at those names. Nicholas Heinrichs, Dr. Neville Huntington, Count Sergei Demas. Coincidence? Not very likely. Has Dr. Petrovich come in yet? He's waiting. Oh, good. Have him come right in. Now, if Petrovich can match the name on this list, the picture in that dossier, that, Eric, is our tie-in. Oh, good morning, Doctor. Sorry to keep you waiting. Good morning, gentlemen. I'll come right to the point. Uh, doctor, you presided over an astro science conference several months ago. Uh, this is a list of the men who attended that conference. Do you think you could remember the face of every man on that list? Well, I remember Dr. Marcus, Nico Boswick. I know Park Gildon well. Yes, probably. Uh, it's my understanding, Doctor, that these men were uh, carefully screened by security. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, do you remember this man? I'm sorry, but all questions must be submitted in writing. Yes, I remember the face. Quiet, man. He stayed to himself. As I recall, he's one of the few that never took notes. Why do you ask? We asked, Doctor, because that man was found dead in front of the nightclub. A hit-run victim. Now, I'm certain that uh, subversive elements have in their possession very important information. There has got to be a direct connection between this information and the murders. Are you trying to say that someone has been successful in creating an astro man? Exactly. If you'll forgive me, Doctor, recall the nature of Lynn's murder at the lab. The missing vital organs. You mean DeMarco? Well, if not DeMarco, something created by him, something with a demented mind? Of course. The only brains Dr. DeMarco could use in his experiments were those of dead criminals. Now, would we know who these men were? Oh, yes, certainly, from the records in the pathology lab. Or from Janine. She was his assistant. She'd remember all of them. Chuck, get those records. I have an idea. Who's a fool? You done the killing. Yes, and don't you forget it. Now, shut up and listen. Not only have I found a way electronically to reactivate deceased body cells, but I've also developed blood that is impervious to infection and disease and possesses the latent quality of instant coagulation. For example, this synthetic fluid has the ability to feed body cells and keep them functioning as if in a living being. Police arriving at the scene reported several shots at point-blank range had no effect on the suspect, and no traces of blood were found. 
seems our Dr. DeMarco has succeeded in creating a subservient zombie. Not someone who questions orders. This is something my government must have. If DeMarco is transmitting program information like the tape says, and we know the frequency of that radio transmission, we'll find DeMarco's lab with an RF direction finder. Well, let's not waste any more time. Done any other way? It's the only way. It's the only way possible, believe me. Here, Janine, these are the uh, pathology records. Take a look at them. Is it possible any one case had a special meaning to you? Yes. There's a certain look men get before they die. I first saw it when I was ward nurse, and then again when I became Dr. DeMarco's assistant. One of those in the records? Yes. One night, Dr. DeMarco had a call from the hospital. They had a man who had been shot by the police, and he had only a short time to live. Dr. DeMarco thought we might be able to freeze some vital organs immediately after the moment of death. So we rushed over. I'll never forget the look on that man's face just before he died. It was a fixed, frightening, almost hypnotic stare. You know something? Holman's plan might work. I think it will. Now listen, my dear. We're convinced that Dr. DeMarco has created an astro man with a defective brain. Now if it's the brain of the man you've just described, it would explain why he returned to the lab. And murdered Lynn. Do you mean he was looking for me? Possibly. We feel he'll attempt to return to the lab if he has a reason. I see. Oh, you mean you want me to act as bait? Honey, Chuck and I will be right outside the door. When? Tonight. down a grid on the city map by driving the RF finder on a northerly to southerly direction, then cross-cutting its east to west will cover a large amount of the city all at once. What made you think it works? Listen, friend, I know my business. Now, we'll set up the frequency selector to pick up only those frequencies transmitted over over 100,000 cycles. That way we'll black out all the commercial radio and television stations. Excellent. Where do you suggest we start? Oh, I think the Woodland Hills area has a height advantage. We can cover the eastern part of the city in a minimal amount of time. I don't like the risk. You let me worry about the risk. What kind of car did you get this time? The car is no problem. Did you change the plates? Of course. Good. Let's get started. Now, Francho, the time has now come to test our new brain. We must feed this memory circuit through the emotional quotient rectifier to determine if there's any residual impurity.
I've introduced into the console the electrolytic limiters, which should disallow interference with the program patterns functioning within the body mechanism, uh, actuate the heart circuit. Excellent. Before we can recall our first creation, we must attempt to override his emotional index by stepping up the voltage and transmission frequency. You use your tongue prettier than a $20 whore. boost will not affect an override. Francho, remove number nine from the thermal freeze casket. Prepare him for brain transfer and total astromobilization. The house used in the Astro Zombies belonged to actor Peter Falk of Colombo fame. He was a friend of the film's writer and producer Wayne Rogers which you may remember as Captain Trapper John from the TV series Match. Falk was slated to have a cameo in the film, but director Ted Michaels cut Falk's scene saying he was too comedic for what was a serious role in a sci-fi horror film. <laughs> One more question, sir. Trust me, the only thing serious about this movie is the need for some antacids. <laughs> <laughs> the Astro Zombies was shot on a budget of $37,000 in six days which 3,000 of that went to pay John Carradine to babble incoherently with scientific gibberish. Morgan Crocker Crocker is gonna roll away for this cutter! So let's finish this movie, and I'll see you at the end. Now, Janine, you know, you know what to do. The main thing is now to look busy here. Come on, sit over here. Take a look at some slides, you know. Do something that, anything you'd normally do in the lab. Now, this is important. You've got to show yourself out this window every now and then. Pardon me for being nosy, but uh, where do you suppose he'll come in? Honey, we don't know, but don't worry about it. You won't take a breath in here we won't know about. Yeah, that looks like about it. Janine. Good luck, honey.
sounds like she's keeping busy. Ah, uh, we should be able to see her by the window. Something? Look like it's gonna work, huh? Mm. Come on, I'll drive you home. Some coffee. Or a drink. Sounds pretty good. Come on. Everybody else has lights. Got a flashlight? No, I don't. I have one in the car and I'll check the fuse box. Be right back.
right. Yes. 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 Uh, Eric Porter, put me over to Holman right away. Holman, I'm at Janine's apartment. The Astro Man tried to attack her. Now look, I knocked off what might be his power source. It looked like a storyteller or something. I don't know. No, 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 he got away. Look, he grabbed my flashlight, shined it on what looks like photo cell stuck in his forehead. Now look, if Petrovich is right, he's got to head back to the Marcus lab. Can you get Chuck to converge all available vehicles in the area? We're bound to pick up his trail somewhere. Right, and please call me back. Let's go. No, you're mistaken. Only I will go. Tails. What is this? She knows. Now that we have found out the Marcus lab, my formation is complete. I knew I was right about you. Yes. There are other governments whose agents pay a higher price than yours. As always, Fowers, you're a fool. I have to take out any more from you. I'm sorry, Juan. You must go, too. I should have killed you before. But you may have the pleasure, Juan. We're friends. Friendly enough to kill. <laughs> Tyus, my friend, we must part company. <laughs> Poor Tyrus. He was never any good at picking with winners. <laughs> Let's go. We must not keep Dr. DeMarco waiting. Thank you. 
Francho, come here. Your own experiments will have to wait. I require your assistance in more important work. Hand me the circuit fuser. Solar energy cells to the nerve centers is now complete. You see, Francho, the degree of photosensitivity is very important. In addition to the reception of all artificial light or uh, the activation of the heart pump, these photoelectric cells also polarize sunlight for assimilation and storage of the excess in the battery pack. Now, set the uh, Set the heart flow valve on the pump to five and the induction coil to 0.2 amps. We must affect the brain transplant while the body is still in a semi-cryogenic state. Another failure would be disastrous. Yes, it would. very adept in your field of electronics, Doctor. With the proper equipment, it was quite easy for us to pick up your radio transmissions. What do you want? Your knowledge. My knowledge would be useless to you. That is for us to decide. We are aware of your experiments, Doctor. We know that you have succeeded in creating an astro zombie. How did you know that? The recent murders, the news description of the suspect, and a tape of your lecture at the Astro Science Conference. Yes, he's the only complete astro mobilization I've been able to effect to date. Unfortunately, however, not totally successful. The only brain available to me at the time was that of a psychopathic killer. But I have prepared a new astro man. And who is this man? Francho, my assistant. Able, loyal, and unfortunately mute. Fortunate for him. We just completed the photocell test and we're about to activate the heart system. By all means, proceed. Get a chair and help him to the energizer. My power cell is gone. I need saving for you in the car now. Please go back. I don't want to be alone. All right, come on.
Now you stay right here and don't move. of the second astral man whose brain is morally pure. desperate and just drank a half a bottle of NyQuil kind of way. <laughs> but Mr. Molto's left with one question. How do you use the silencer on a revolver? I mean, I'm no Bill Nye the science guy, but 
Silencers don't work on revolvers. There's too many places besides the muzzle that noise would escape. Sarcasm is anger's ugly cousin. From now on, unacceptable. Hey, I'm just saying. Anyway, I hope somehow you still enjoyed the movie. So with that, it's time to wrap this one up and get out of here. Adios! Have a nice trip! Bon voyage! So from the wonderful town of Huber Heights... This town needs an enema! This is Mr. Molto saying, peace. What the? Hey! Hey! Put that down! I told you, you can't. You don't mess with that. I don't care if people thought that was a movie prop. Put it down. Turn him off and put him back in the closet for later.